Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. This is episode 101 and so today to celebrate we're going to answer 101 questions about Minecraft submitted by you, the audience of the Minecraft Survival Guide. So without further ado, let's get into it. How far away should I place a lightning rod? Lightning rods protect a spherical radius of 128 blocks on Java Edition and 64 blocks on Bedrock Edition. So if you stand on a lightning rod in Java Edition and you can see a hostile mob spawning at night, in theory that mob is protected from a lightning strike. What useless item do you think should have more uses? It's not exactly useless, but I think I'd kind of like clocks to do more than just tell you the time. Where is a good place to look for geodes? The game spawns geodes below Y30, although the geode can generate so the top half is above that coordinate. Can you zombify and cure the wandering trader? Nope. In fact, they turn invisible at night or if threatened by mobs. Is there a way to farm the wandering trader? Technically you can, it's just a matter of creating the ideal spawning conditions for the trader, but it's not really possible to gather resources from him in a super meaningful way. Do you think unused mobs such as the zombie horse or illusioner should be implemented in survival? I think the illusioner is more of a pain to fight than anything, but zombie horses are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind seeing them in survival. Which blocks can be instamined, and what are the requirements? The Minecraft wiki has an awesome article which lists everything that can be instamined. There's too many to list here, but it's worth a read. One thing I'll add is that you can instamine obsidian if you give yourself efficiency 7 and haste 125 using commands. Which type of blocks can be waterlogged? Once again there are too many to read out here but I'll put a list on the screen for Java edition. There's a table on the wiki that explains differences between bedrock and Java and I'm really looking forward to waterlogging leaves in Minecraft 119. What should and shouldn't you build in the spawn chunks? If a farm relies on natural mob spawning or crops growing, a player needs to be within 128 blocks of the farm, so those won't always be active if they're in the spawn chucks. Three things you should build there are a house, to have somewhere safe if you end up respawning there, your iron farm, since villagers don't need a player around to produce iron golems, and maybe an auto smelter, since furnaces in the spawn chunks will continue to run if you're elsewhere in the world. What are the first jobs you usually assign to villagers? Something I can trade easy resources to for emeralds, like a farmer or a fletcher, and then it's librarians so I can get hold of the mending enchantment. How do I get a hoglin into the overworld if they're afraid of nether portals? The trick I usually use is to light the nether portal as they're walking through it. Can mobs that cause status effects, like wither skeletons, pufferfish, elder guardians and cave spiders, inflict those effects on other mobs? Yes, but only if they directly attack that mob. For example, if a piglin fights a wither skeleton, it's going to get the wither effect, and arrows shot by strays can inflict other mobs with slowness. But elder guardians only give mining fatigue to players, which which makes sense because the player is the only one who can break blocks by mining them. What happens when you try to move a spawner with a piston? Actually, nothing. Spawners aren't movable by pistons. They don't break either, they just sit there. How do you get around the too expensive thing when trying to repair your high level enchanted tools? In some cases you might be able to combine a different tool with a different combination of enchants, but if a straight up repair has become too expensive, it's probably time to either make a new tool or invest in some mending books. Is it possible to make a silverfish XP farm using the spawner near the end portal? Yes, although it's not the most effective thing. In theory you could have the silverfish infest some stone until later, but with 119 on the way that's just skulk blocks with extra steps. Is there a flower farm design that works for both Java and Bedrock Edition? All a flower farm really needs to operate is an area that grows flowers, something to bone meal them, and something to break the flowers so that they can be gathered. Simple designs can work on both Java and Bedrock Edition, although Bedrock Edition allows you to bone meal small flowers to propagate them, which Java Edition doesn't. Is it possible to build with sand or gravel floating in midair? Technically, yes, and the easiest way is to have it balanced on something that's almost completely invisible, like string. But there are glitches that allow sand to be placed in the air on its own and like sand that naturally generates this way, it'll fall if an adjacent block is updated. Can you put fortune on shears to get more wool from sheep? Fortune can't be put on shears in survival, but even if you do that in creative mode where you can enchant anything with anything, it doesn't work. Fortune only affects mind blocks, not mob drops. Which is more destructive, TNT, a charged creeper, using a bed or respawn anchor in the wrong dimension, or an end crystal? Out of all of these, TNT is actually the weakest. 
Beds and respawn anchors are the next level up. Then charged creepers and end crystals have the strongest explosive power. The only thing stronger is the explosion when the wither spawns. What is the bounding box for guardian spawns? And do they spawn in flowing water or bubble columns? Guardians spawn in a 58 by 58 box, going from the floor of the ocean monument up to the ocean surface. My guardian farm uses bubble columns and it works great. What's the difference between the far lands and the world border? The Far Lands was a terrain generation bug in beta versions of Minecraft, creating this odd wall of terrain if you got around 12.5 million blocks away from spawn. This was fixed after beta 1.7.3. The world border is a glowing wall which generates a maximum of 30 million blocks out but can be moved inwards using commands. Terrain still generates beyond it, but it's inaccessible and largely featureless. How long would it take you to reach the borders of the world traveling on foot? The average speed a player moves while sprinting and jumping is around 7.127 blocks per second. From spawn to the world border is 30 million blocks, so if you could keep that speed the entire way with no obstacles and no need to stop and eat, it'd still take you 4,209,334 seconds or 48 days and 17 hours of non-stop travel before you reach the world border. Is there any enchantment you can put on a shield? While you can't enchant them in an enchanting table, you can apply unbreaking and mending to a shield. Do amethyst crystals emit different light levels? Yes, the different stages of amethyst clusters emit light levels between 1 and 5. And here's that again with smooth lighting off to give you a slightly better picture. What's the difference between taming a mob and gaining its trust? Tamed mobs will follow you around, like parrots, cats, or tamed wolves. Mobs which trust you simply won't run from you when you approach them, but they won't follow you and can't be told to sit still. It's possible to attach any of them to leads though. Is there an easier way to navigate larger caves, like an area where multiple torches are required? Leave markers for yourself. People frequently do stuff like this in the nether too. You can light your way around by using torches, but using another light source block or some other kind of block that's not native to the cave environment to mark your way is usually a pretty good idea. Perhaps most importantly, mark exits. I tend to leave a vertical line of torches on the wall when I've dropped down from a ledge as an indication that I should climb back up somewhere. Do illagers keep spawning in a woodland mansion after you've killed all of them, or is there a fixed amount in every mansion? Woodland mansion vindicators and evokers generate with the structure, and they do not despawn if you leave the area, but they also don't respawn once killed. The best place to respawn both of these mobs is during a pillager raid. If you make a floor out of top slabs, will mobs still spawn? Yes. The game looks for a solid block surface to spawn mobs on, but this doesn't have to be a full block. Top half slabs do count. People use these frequently in mob farms, actually, since once they've spawned, mob AI looks for full blocks to pathfind to, so they don't try to walk around much on the slabs. How long does it take for bees to fill a hive with honey? Each hive can hold three bees, so assuming no travel time, they each spend 30 seconds around a flower and about two minutes making honey in the hive, so they can usually fill a hive within five minutes. Do tridents enchanted with loyalty come back when thrown in the void? In Java edition, loyalty tridents need to hit a block before they will return, so throwing them into the void will destroy them. On Bedrock Edition, they return after about 15 seconds. Can you convert concrete powder by using waterlogged blocks like slabs or stairs? Yes, but only if they make contact with a surface where water could flow out. The top faces and solid faces of stairs or slabs won't convert concrete powder, although they will convert lava into obsidian or flowing lava into cobblestone. Is farming azaleas a viable method of getting lots of oak logs? I actually find azalea more reliable than oak saplings, because you don't have to worry about limiting their height to avoid the large trees growing, and I find they take less bone meal per sapling on average. The main disadvantage is they don't grow naturally, so you have to use bone meal in order to grow them. How big or small can nether portals get? A 4x5 frame with a 2x3 interior is the smallest, and a 23x23 frame with a 21x21 interior is the largest. Can I use Frostwalker boots on flowing water? Nope, Frostwalker has no effect on flowing water except when it freezes the source block, which can cause the water to stop flowing. If you want to avoid this, Frostwalker will have no effect on sources which are part of waterlogged blocks. Is there any point to using the specialized protection enchantments? Sure there is. They provide more protection against those individual sources than the regular protection enchantment does. Fire 
fire protection has the added bonus of reducing the amount of time you spend on fire, but naturally if you want an all-round approach, protection is the most versatile. Are petrified oak slabs obtainable in survival? Nope, they're only obtainable through creative mode, commands, or data packs. What's the minimum amount of dyes you need to mix all 16 colours? These are the ingredients for all 16 colours of dye. You've got 8 white dye, 3 black dye, 6 red dye, 2 yellow dye, 3 green dye, 5 blue dye, and 1 brown die. Everything else is just combinations of these six. What's a weird combination of blocks that looks good in a build palette? I always thought that dried kelp blocks and red terracotta go together really well. What game rules would you change on a private server to make the game more friendly to younger children? Keep inventory is a good one so they don't lose equipment if they die. Depending on how young the children are, I'd probably disable raids, pillager patrols, and phantoms to make things a little less intense combat-wise. In 119, there will also be an option to disable the warden if your kids are likely to be scared by that. Is it worth it to enchant your shield and shears. The shield is definitely worth enchanting. Since I enchanted this one, I've never had to worry about the durability or craft another one. Shears are worth enchanting if you want to instamine wool or vines, but aside from that, shears run out of durability so quickly that repairing them with mending feels a little tedious. What are the best enchantments for axes, shovels, and hoes? Efficiency, unbreaking, and mending are worth having on all of them. Personally, I love silk touch on a shovel so I don't get flint while I'm mining gravel. I also like having silk touch on an axe so I can mine mushroom blocks. Hoes are a split between Silk Touch and Fortune. Fortune will get you more saplings, but Silk Touch hoes are like a more durable set of shears. What is the rarest or hardest to get item in the game, and how do you obtain it? In Java Edition, there is only one dragon egg, and you need to fight the Ender Dragon in order to get it. Decide for yourself whether that's difficult. Aside from that, the other side music disc and Enchanted Golden Apples are pretty rare, but both can be found in dungeon loot chests if you get lucky. By the way, item rarity is actually denoted by the colour of the item name, so Golden Apples are un common and enchanted golden apples are legendary. Apparently emerald ore is common. Hmm, not sure about that Minecraft. <laughs> Is it possible to make a pillager farm from outposts? Yes, pillagers will respawn constantly in the area around a pillager outpost. They don't really drop anything all that useful though, just crossbows and experience. So using an outpost to start a raid will give you a much more useful variety of drops. Do villagers need beds to restock trades? Not on Java Edition, they just need a workstation and they'll restock twice per day. Is there a way to stop a zombie villager despawning if you don't have a name tag? Mobs typically don't despawn if they're riding in a boat or a Minecart, and some zombie villagers may be able to hold items or equip armor. If they're holding something you've dropped, they won't despawn because they would take your gear with them. Is it possible to heal a villager if they take damage? Yes, you can splash them with a potion of healing or regeneration. They also get a brief burst of regeneration each time they level up, and on Bedrock Edition they heal themselves each time they wake up at the start of a new day. What non-boss mob drops the most XP? Technically, a fully armoured chicken jockey, if you count the chicken as well, will give you something like 34 XP. In terms of single mobs, the Ravager and the Piglin Brute both drop 20 XP, which is about four times the amount you get from killing something basic like these zombies. Do slimes only spawn on a full moon, or do they spawn every night? Slimes spawn every night, except on a new moon. They get more common as the moon waxes, and less common as the moon wanes. Is using sharpness or smite better? Since you can't one-shot any mobs with sharpness, but you can with smite, and there are so many undead mobs. There are lots of undead mobs, so being able to kill them in one hit with smite is useful, but looking at my stats, the most mobs I have killed have been endermen in my enderman farm. I've killed over 10,000 of them at this point, and they aren't affected by smite at all. Like protection on armor, I find it more effective to have the best all-round equipment for regular gameplay. What is the best enchantment for a sword? Personally, I think looting or sweeping edge are the main reasons to use a sword over an axe. What are mods, and how are they different from resource packs? Mods are community-created code injected into the game to change the experience in ways which are unintended by the developers. Resource packs typically just change the game's textures, models, sounds, and other cosmetic things. You might also have heard of data packs, which can change the game experience in similar ways to mods, but using a framework provided by Mojang themselves. They're sort of a lighter version of mods, but they're capable of a lot. How can I kill villagers or iron golems without them being angry at me? So if you really have to kill a villager or a golem, Environmental damage is the way to do it. The game doesn't keep track of whether the player placed a bucket of lava or a campfire, so tipping lava onto villagers or golems or having them fall into powdered snow or something isn't going to affect your reputation with the village. If you had two level 30 enchantment tables, would you get two different sets of enchantments? Nope. 
Every enchantment table in the game gives you the same enchantments unless you alter the amount of bookshelves. You notice that all three enchantments here at level 30 are exactly the same. If it helps, think of it like an ender chest. It's the same contents regardless of where you go in the world. How far apart do torches need to be to mob spawn proof a flat area, and how far apart for a straight tunnel? Torches emit light level 14, so they will light the block they're standing on and 13 blocks straight in every cardinal direction. This means that two torches 26 blocks apart will prevent anything spawning in a straight line between them. However, the light level falls off by two points for each diagonal block you travel, so you need to place them in a grid a maximum of 13 blocks apart to evenly light a flat area. Can you make an XP farm using a Johnny name tagged Vindicator? Mobs only drop XP if the game thinks they're killed by a a player or a tamed wolf. For example, if I kill this squid, the squid drops experience. If Johnny the Vindicator kills the squid, no experience drops. The one exception to this right now, although this is probably going to change in future, is zombified piglins, which will drop experience if they are killed by something as long as they're aggressive at the time. Unfortunately, zombie piglins all carry gold swords and could damage the Vindicator, so while you could technically make an XP farm that way, he probably wouldn't last very long. What is the best method to obtain large amounts of mossy cobblestone? So best here is really a, just a matter of play style. You can set up automatic generators for both moss and cobblestone, but if you aren't technically minded, you could use a haste 2 beacon to instamine for cobblestone, shears with efficiency 2 or higher to instamine vines, or a hoe and some bone meal to farm a ton of moss. Then just craft the two together and you'll have all the mossy cobblestone you want. Why shouldn't you dig straight down? So digging out the block immediately below you means you're going to fall into any caves, enormous caverns, dripstone stalagmites, uh, water pockets, or any lava lakes that have generated directly below you. There are safe ways to dig downwards though, like standing between two blocks and then digging out the blocks to your left and your right. Which structure do you think is the hardest to rebuild based on your experiences in Season 1? That dubious honor goes to the Bastion Remnant, which are the toughest structure to reproduce because there aren't many obvious patterns to them, they're all broken up like this, and most of the time they're huge structures which require a lot of hard to get materials. Woodland Mansions would probably be second though, just because of their sheer size. What do you think are the first farms someone should make in a world? If it's your first time playing Minecraft, focusing on on crops and animals is worth doing. You'll learn mechanics that you'll use very frequently later on. If you're more experienced with Minecraft, setting up farms for food, sugarcane, iron, mob drops, and then moving into villager trading seems like the best foundation for a long-term world. Can you explain to us the mechanics behind an iron farm? In Java Edition, a group of five villagers can produce an iron golem during the meeting times of the day, as long as they've slept within the last 20 minutes and haven't seen an iron golem within the last 30 seconds. If the iron golems are regularly removed from the village, a normal population of villagers can make a few iron golems per day. Iron farms speed this up using villagers' panic mechanics. They still need to sleep at least once every 20 minutes, but if they detect a threat nearby, like a zombie, a vindicator, a ravager, or a pillager, three villagers can produce an iron golem regardless of the time of day, as long as they haven't detected an iron golem nearby in the last 30 seconds. If you frequently remove iron golems from the area around the villagers, they will produce one iron golem every 35 seconds. So why are no more iron golems spawning in my village or iron farm? It's either because the villagers have detected an existing iron golem within a 16 by 16 cube around them, or they haven't been able to sleep in the last 20 minutes because they're too scared of the zombie. If you go somewhere else in your world to sleep, or you manage to skip the night before the villagers have had a chance to sleep, they haven't fulfilled that sleep requirement and they won't be able to spawn a golem. Will an ender pearl bring you back to the overworld from the nether or the end? Nope, ender pearls can only teleport you within the dimension where they're thrown. And if you throw one right before you enter a nether portal, it lands before the chunks in the overworld unload, meaning that it doesn't teleport you once you return to the overworld. The same goes for ender pearl teleporters. When a chunk is loaded, is it entirely loaded from Y-64 to Y-320? It seems like my crops don't grow when I'm down in the mines underneath. Yes, entire chunks are loaded from top to bottom, but players need to be within 128 blocks of crops crops in order for them to grow. If you're mining for diamonds at bedrock, your crops growing a couple of chunks away at sea level won't receive the random growth ticks they need to grow a stage. Does honey still cure buffs and debuffs? If so, then why don't more people use honey bottles? They're stackable. This is a common misconception about honey. I've given myself poison, slowness, and strength, and if I drink a honey bottle right now, it will only cure the poison. 
Honey only cures the poison debuff and has no effect on other statuses. Is it more efficient to craft more duration 1 rockets or fewer duration 3 rockets? Once again, this is more a matter of playstyle. Personally, I prefer to craft duration 1 rockets for a 1 to 1 ratio of gunpowder and paper. You can craft longer duration rockets by adding one more gunpowder to the recipe, but with duration 1 rockets you consume the least amount of gunpowder and a shorter boost makes short term flights and precise flying a lot easier. If you spend a lot of time traveling long distances, duration 3 might might work better for you, but optimal elytra flight is often more about glide angle and conserving momentum. What are some basic tips for surviving more and dying less? Eat whenever you've lost a couple of hunger points. You won't be able to regenerate health unless your hunger bar is full. When you're caving for resources, always light a couple of torches ahead of you before you go back for the precious stuff. I do this all the time and people think I've missed the resources or I'm not bothered to collect them, but really I'm just making sure that creepers don't sneak up on me. If you've done a couple of raids and you aren't using your offhand for anything else, consider holding a totem of undying, but I genuinely recommend using a shield. They do block 100% of damage from creeper explosions. What accessibility features are available? in Minecraft for disabled players. I covered most of Minecraft's accessibility settings in my video on video settings and accessibility, but I'd also like to encourage you to check out a video by Logic Pro X Gaming. He's a blind player named Chris who has an in-depth explanation about his setup for Minecraft. I'll link it in the description. Can you use blue sheep to distract evokers during combat? An evoker won't stop attacking a player to re-die a blue sheep, but by that point they've probably already summoned vexes. How long does it take for vexes to die after being summoned? They start Start taking damage anywhere between 30 seconds and 2 minutes, but this apparently only happens on Java Edition. They also don't really seem to care about the wandering trader. <laughs> Which foods do you recommend eating? Golden carrots restore 3 shanks of hunger, but they have the best saturation of any stackable food source, which means it takes longer for the player to get hungry again after eating them, and you can easily buy them from farmers. If you're more focused on hunger than saturation, steak and pork chops are probably the best stackable food sources. What can I do with the dragon egg? The dragon egg is a trophy item, it doesn't really do anything, although it is affected by gravity, so you could do some fun stuff with that. Contrary to popular belief, the dragon egg has nothing to do with respawning the dragon. How does raid spawning work? Once you have bad omen and you've returned to something that the game accounts as a village, the game will search for solid blocks in a 64 block radius from the village center, always looking for the highest solid block in the chunk in order to spawn the raiders. It tries to do that 20 times, and if those attempts fail, it searches within a 32 block radius of the village, then a 0 block radius of the village, and that's why raid farms are able to spawn raid mobs directly above the center of a village. What was the original world height limit? Back when Minecraft originally began, the world was only 64 blocks tall, 32 blocks above sea level and 32 below. This was increased to 128 blocks in inf dev, 256 in Minecraft Java edition 1.2.1, and finally to 384 in 1.18. Does loading in a bunch of terrain around your world in 118 mean you're missing out on the deep dark or other biomes and structures generating once 119 rolls around? The game won't generate any newly added biomes or structures in areas you've already explored. Basically, Mojang doesn't want to risk overwriting anything the player has built there already, so you need to venture out into unexplored chunks to find new terrain, but in an upcoming episode we will talk about how to trim areas of your world to allow for new generation closer to home. How do I breed parrots? Parrots actually cannot be bred. Is it possible to catch a bat with a lead? Bats are pretty hard to catch anyway, but no, you can't put them on leads. What is Minecraft? I mean, what isn't Minecraft at this point? <laughs> will you take damage if a creeper explodes in water? Players and other entities will take damage, but notably, explosions that take place in water do not destroy the surrounding blocks. What's the best Y coordinate for iron? Natural iron generation is densest around Y16, but you'll find much higher concentrations in huge iron veins, which can be found in the deep slate levels of the world below Y0. What does mending prioritize if you have it on all your tools? The XP will be split randomly between whichever tools and armor you currently have equipped until they're fully repaired. Keep in mind that to be equipped, it has to be in your main hand, your off hand, or something you're physically wearing. How do I find out which chunks I've previously been to in my world? There isn't really a great way to do this in-game unless you're keeping maps of everywhere you've been. One way you can do this though is to download a tool which can produce an overview map of your Minecraft world. What makes a village? 
a village. All Minecraft Java Edition needs to count something as a village is one villager and a single point of interest, like a bed, a workstation, or a village bell. Once it has those components, it counts as a village for the purposes of things like starting pillager raids. Can you kill the Ender Dragon without destroying the End Crystals? Yes. It's harder with the dragon regenerating health, but it's definitely possible, and I didn't have time to do it in this video. If you get one netherite ingot, what should you upgrade first? In my world, I've used the pickaxe more than any other tool, so it's probably safe to say your diamond pickaxe will be most important. However, getting the hoe gets you an achievement. <laughs> How does height actually affect mob spawning? When Minecraft Java Edition spawns mobs, the game searches from the bottom of the chunk to the top, looking for places mobs can spawn. If the highest block in a chunk is really low down in the world, the process of searching the chunk can start again much quicker. So in the time it might take the game to search an entire natural chunk, it can search this carved out area a whole bunch of times. Can you kill the wither with potatoes? Well, you can kill the wither with a potato in your hand, but since the potato doesn't add any actual attack damage, are you really killing the wither using the potato, or are you just punching it? Well, actually, looking at the game's console logs, if you kill something with a renamed item, it still counts as being killed with that item. So I'm gonna say yes to that one. And if I've learned anything from the experience, it's that this potato deserves to be renamed. <laughs> Can you still tame ocelots even though the village cats are a thing? You can feed and breed ocelots and they will trust you, but they won't be tamed and follow you around. Ocelots are distinct from other cats after Minecraft 1.14. Can you sleep in a bed in the end dimension? No, beds explode in the end just like they do in the nether. Since the introduction of the respawn anchor in Minecraft 1.16, the end is the only dimension you can't set your spawn in. How does soul speed work? If you run on soul sand or soul soil and you have the soul speed enchantment on your boots, you get a speed boost. But this also uses up the boots durability as you run. How do you tame an axolotl in Minecraft? Axolotls can't really be tamed, but you can pick them up in a bucket and putting them down again makes them persistent so they won't despawn. You breed them using buckets of tropical fish. What's the rarest mob in the game to find? In Java edition, the chances of finding a left-handed zombie villager chicken jockey carrying an enchanted iron sword and wearing fully enchanted diamond armor is 1 in 1 1.9921 times 10 to the power of 35. That's like with 35 extra zeros after it. I've been playing Minecraft for about 7 or 8 years and I've only ever seen mobs spawn with diamond armor 3 or 4 times. What is a debug stick? The debug stick is a creative tool only accessible using commands and it just lets you cycle between different block states. How do I see chunk borders? On Java Edition pressing F3 and G toggles chunk borders on and off. What are wither roses and what are their uses? The wither rose is a unique flower generated when the wither kills a mob. They can be planted in the same places you plant other flowers but also on a netherrack and if any entity walks into them as long as it can be affected it receives a couple of seconds of the wither effect. What is the Minecraft score based off when you die? The score shows the total amount of experience you've collected since your last death. This also counts experience you've spent on enchanting or repairing items so it isn't just based on how many levels you had when you died. What is adventure? Adventure mode, and how is it different from survival and creative? Adventure mode is intended for use with adventure maps. It basically prevents players from cheating their way through a map by breaking blocks. You can't interact with them at all. Well, that's not precisely true. I can break a bit of this farmland by jumping up and down on it, but I can't break it by hand. You can only really interact with tile entities like chests and item frames blocks like a composter and redstone components and other mobs. So it's not some kind of hidden quest game mode kind of thing for Minecraft, it's really just a way of locking in certain features of custom maps. How many hidden advancements are there? In Minecraft 1.18, there are four hidden advancements which don't appear in the advancements tab until after you've completed them. I already have two of those which are Voluntary Exile and Hero of the Village for starting and completing a pillager raid. A third one called Arbalistic is over here somewhere and it's unlocked by shooting a bunch of mobs with a piercing arrow from a crossbow. And the fourth one is How Did We Get Here, which is an add-on from A Furious Cocktail where you have to have every potion effect at the same time. How Did We Get Here requires every status effect to be active at the same time. Two more hidden advancements are being added in Minecraft 1.19 and both are related to the LA. Why do bats spawn in caves? Uh, 
for ambience. Bats only spawn in low light levels and are just there to provide squeaky sounds, flap around a lot, and take an arrow intended for a creeper. Can villagers sleep in the nether and the end? Yes, a uh, villager's daily routine is based on game ticks, not whether they can see the day or night. And since they aren't setting a spawn point like the player does, the game doesn't have an issue with them sleeping in a bed. I made an entire village in the end last season and will probably do something similar this season. Do cows need grass to refill their milk? Nope, unlike sheep and for some reason horses, cows do not need to graze on grass and you can get buckets of milk from them basically whenever you want to. Are you updating this world to Minecraft 1.19? Yes, Minecraft 1.19 is due to release in a week on June 7th and season 2 of the survival guide will continue into that update. But folks, thank you so much for watching this 101 questions video. There was a lot of questions, but I'm so glad we got through them all. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It really means a lot and it's always super fun doing videos like this. So thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.